thoughts on the deuce. First take, going camping. We're lucky to be on a team with some really good players. Lucky to have him, lucky to have this offensive line, the defense that we're going to have. I think there's a lot of players that get me excited, you know, to, to, to know that uh, I just need to go out and be the best version of myself and trust in the guys and go play. And I think our team, you know, takes that approach each day and it's exciting to go out and grind it out with them. Optimistic Tony Romo speaking to John Gruden about this season. The Cowboys were bold in the draft and in free agency. They did lose DeMarco Murray, though. Stephen A., how much will the Cowboys struggle, actually Romo specifically, without DeMarco this season? Well, it remains to be seen because uh, the offensive line presumably is going to protect him big time. I'm of the mindset that Romo won't have the kind of year that he had last year. Remember, he led the league. I'm just looking at some of the numbers here that I wrote down. He led the league. Um, you got 34 touchdowns and nine interceptions. That, you know, he led the league in completion percentage of 69.9. All right. Yards per attempt at 8.5. Passer ratings at 113.2, and he had five game-winning drives. So when you look at it from that perspective, the chances are, is Tony Romo going to do that again this year? I say no. I think he'll throw for more yards. I think he may throw for more touchdowns. But I also think he's going to throw for more interceptions, and I don't think he's going to be as healthy. Even though they could have protected him, I think as much as the offensive line protected him, a legitimate argument could be made that that running game led by DeMarco Murray and his 1,800-plus yards, his 392 carries, his 57 pass reception touches combined for 449 touches, I think those assisted in protecting Tony Romo because Tony Romo was not as exposed. Now, unless the Cowboys are going to run the football significantly, or just as much with a McFadden, with a Randall, a Dunbar, and those guys. I don't see that. I see them throwing the football more. The more they throw the football, the less protected Tony Romo is going to be. That means he's going to get hit more. It means he's going to throw some interceptions. And I think that he'll still have a big time year. I just don't think it will be with the level of accuracy and precision that we saw last year. He will return to Tony Romo. There will be big mistakes in big moments. There will be less than 69.9% .9 of his completed passes. It'll be a little bit less than that. I think numbers wise, he'll just have more yardage, but he'll also have more interceptions and less accuracy. I, I want to thank you. I know we're early in the season here, obviously haven't even gotten to the first preseason game, but you actually spoke with just a little bit of respect about my man, Tony Romo. I, I didn't hear a note of sarcasm. You did not use your old accident waiting to happen. Maybe you're reserving that for game one or two or three or whatever oh, you think he's going to it's come. It's coming. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about you, that. It's, it's coming. coming. But but I, I do, I thank you for that, even though it's extremely early. And I am looking forward to getting to those camps, though, t tomorrow, the next day, and the next day, but not cowboy camp. So back to Tony Romo, Stephen A. Smith. I told you at the end of the regular season last year that Tony Romo deserved to be the MVP. And I believe, with all my heart and soul, that he will be at least as good this year. Now, I'm with you. Clearly, they don't have a DeMarco Murray. And I will be the first to admit, I am early on very troubled, concerned about the fact that Darren McFadden already can't stay healthy. This is now twice that he's been sidelined with a hamstring issue. So does that, yeah, yeah, it bothers me. Do I think Darren McFadden could be very good behind this line if he even approximates what he used to be at the University of Arkansas? Yes, I do. And I am mostly banking on that. Did Joseph Randall average about eight yards a carry last year every time he touched the football? Yes, he did. Does he have off-field issues that trouble me? Well, you better believe he has. I'm hoping that, that he will at least contribute about the way he did last year, if not a little bit more. Now back to Tony Romo. I'm going to go on record as saying what I said last year will apply more than ever this year, Stephen A., I believe Tony Romo grew up last year as he got into his early 30s. Now he's, he's going on, what, 34. And, and he's actually, you know, almost to the, to the end of his prime, you might say, as an NFL quarterback. Did it take settling down, getting married, having his kids? Maybe. But 
I, I know people don't like to hear this from me occasionally because it, they just don't want to hear it. But, but I'm going to go there. I believe that Tony Romo, just to put it, keep it on the surface, I believe he's gotten a lot closer to God lately in the last year or so. I believe he's strengthened his relationship to get with God to the point that now in the off season he occasionally gives his testimony to groups. And I've heard from a couple of people who have heard his testimony this off season. And his key point in that testimony is he used to be that rambling gambler. He had that Brett Favre thing going. Obviously grew up in Wisconsin, a big Brett Favre fan. And he, he says that now, because of his relationship with God, that, that he is at, at more at peace on the football field. That he, he pulls the ball back down and he doesn't take the risks that he used to take. Now you can argue that if he doesn't have quite the run game, he'll have to take even more risks. But I loved what he said in the Gruden conversation about how, well, it's, it's pretty simple right now. We've got Dez over there, and I just take one look. Is he singled or is he doubled? If he's singled, I'm probably going to go to Dez. If not, I'm going to run through my progressions quickly, and I'm going to make the right choice. I just find a new peace, a new comfort level around Tony Romo, and I think he is poised to have a big, big year this year, just as that team is poised to have a big year. Well, my response to that, Skip, is first things first in all seriousness. Uh, contrary to what you might believe, I run across a few Cowboys in the offseason. Uh, we get along just fine. Even though I hate on the Cowboys, it's all in fun. We're just talking football. As a human being, I can't imagine people that there are people who exist that's too much nicer and more decent than Tony Romo. I know that Tony Romo's a good guy. I know that it, people that are around him, that get around him, talk about how he's got a good soul. You know, obviously his wife and his wonderful family, uh, that plays a role in the faith that Jerry Jones has had in him, as well as should. Because when you're investing that kind of money in a quarterback, you know, that's the leader of your team, and you need him to be on the up and up on a multitude of levels. So we respect that, okay? But the fact of the matter is, is that Tony Romo got hooked up by Jerry Jones. He, uh, Jerry Jones looked out for him big time by running DeMarco Murray into the ground. That's right, I said it. It's the truth. Because what happened is, is that now you've got DeMarco Murray in Philadelphia, Skip. It's the first two or three days of training camp and already they're monitoring yep. his reps in practice. Well, why? Sure they because are. they know that he was fresh off of 892 carries last year, 57 touches, 57 receptions, overall 449 touches, and they know it's a bit excessive. Even for DeMarco Murray, who's a bulldozer, will run over you, a north and south runner who isn't even 27 years of age yet. So when you take those things into consideration, why would you do that? You did that to protect your quarterback. Now, that wasn't a personal thing, because if you have to make a choice between protecting a quarterback and protecting a running back, any coach worth his soul is going to try to protect the franchise quarterback. We understand that. There's nothing wrong with it. But Tony Romo, let's not have our head in the sand and act like he didn't benefit from that. He did benefit from that. That's what he did. Because the more carries DeMarco Murray had, the less Tony Romo had to throw. He threw the ball like over 100 less times than he did the previous year. Therefore, he was probably sacked less times. When you combine that with the massive offensive line there to protect him, Tony Romo, because of all of that, is coming into this season for the first time healthy in training camp in three years. That's not an accident. It's not a coincidence. So now that you don't have DeMarco Murray and you may not be running the football with that level of frequency, let's see what he does now. Because you are the franchise. You got your $55 million in guarantee. You got your $108 million contract. You're supposed to be the man. You've been there for nine years. Got two playoff victories to show for it. Yet you got commercials. You're playing for America's team. You're playing in a billion-dollar playpen. Everybody loves Romo. We'll see. Let's get it on. Let's find out what he's made of instead of putting dollars around him to protect him. Let him show up and earn that money. Because Des Bryant's going to have to earn it, ain't he? Des Bryant got $70 million, $52 million guaranteed, $30 million signing bonus. Des Bryant's going to have to show up. So what about Tony Romo? Let's see what you got. Let's get it on. So now you're sounding sarcastic. That's the Stephen A. Smith that I know and don't always love. Whatever. You think I care whether you love me on, on the Cowboys issue? I could care less. 
You know, I could care less. So feisty today. We have to move on. We're going to stay in the NFC East, but we're heading to the nation's capital, and we're not talking RG3. 